What is up guys, Stark here. In today's character spotlight, I'm taking a look at the Lancer from Fate Zero, and that is going to be Deer Mid. Now he is, I think, the final servant that I need to do that is rate boosted for the Fate Excel Zero Order event. So today was a pretty good time to go ahead and make his spotlight. So he is going to be a Lancer, and he's a 3 star, so he'll go up to level 70, and at level 70 he will have 6,877 attack and 10,098 HP. So this will rank him 79th overall in attack and 68th overall in HP. So you know for a 3 star servant he's got okay stats, but overall his stats aren't really that good. If you do decide to max him out though, he will end up with 11,307 attack and 15,691 HP. So moving on here to his servant skills. Now all three of his skills aren't you know, particularly bad, but they don't really work that well together and they all kind of just do an assortment of random different things and then they're just kind of thrown together on this character. Uh, but like I said, they're not bad skills. So the first one is going to be the Mind's Eye True B. Now this is a self buff that will apply evasion for one turn and it will also increase his defense for three turns. So this is a very good skill to help him survive, which you know, most Lancers do have those type of skills. And he's particularly good at it, he's kind of really difficult to kill but only in specific situations and we'll talk about that a little bit more on his second skill. But having the evasion for a full turn and a defense boost is always really nice. So moving on here to his second skill, this is going to be the Love Spot C. So this is going to decrease the attack of all female enemies for one turn starting with 30% at level 1 and it goes up to 50% at level 10. So obviously as you guys can tell with this skill it only works on females so you know it is a very situational skill and you're only going to really be making use of it against females so you're kind of only going to really want to use this character if you are going against female servants but if you are going against them then you know this character is going to do very well and this skill is going to be absolutely fantastic for that and then moving on here to his third and final skill is going to be the knight strategy b this will be a self buff that will increase critical star drop rates for three turns starting at 30 percent at level one and going all the way up to 50 percent at level 10. So next up is his class skills, and he only has one, and that's going to be the Magic Resistance B, which will increase his debuff resistance by 17.5%. So now for his Ascension and his skill enhancement materials. For his Ascension, he's going to need some of the Seeds, Feathers, Serpent Jewels, and the Void Dust. And then for the skill enhancements, he's going to need more Feathers, Seeds, Proof of Heroes, and Dust. So overall, he doesn't need all that much to completely max his character out, which is really nice because... You know, honestly, he's definitely not one of the best servants in the game, so it's nice that it doesn't require too much to max him out. So next up, we have his command cards and his Noble Phantasm. So for his command cards, he has two quick, two arts, and one buster. Uh, so you can use him on arts teams and quick teams, but you do ideally want to use him on quick teams for the crit stars. Uh, he doesn't really have that much in terms of crit power and crit skills, but he definitely works best on crit teams or quick teams and... You know, you definitely want to utilize him the most you can in those type of team setups. So as for his Noble Phantasm, it is a quick card, and it's going to deal significant damage to a single enemy, and it will also remove their buffs. And then for the Overcharge effect, it will also inflict Curse on that enemy for 5 turns. So this is a pretty solid Noble Phantasm. It's really good in the fact that it can remove buffs. Uh, it doesn't do that much damage overall though, and the Curse damage isn't really that special. I would have definitely have liked to see it do some other effects, maybe bonus damage against female servants because of the way his skills work. Maybe, you know, a little bit of an extra effect here where, I don't know, I don't know how relevant it would have been, but maybe like something where they can't heal or something like that. But overall, it's pretty solid. Um, there is an interlude quest you can do to power it up, to boost up the damage a little bit. But overall, you know, it's, it's a lackluster Noble Phantasm as far as damage goes, but having the ability to remove buffs is super fantastic and it's definitely really rare as far as Noble Phantasms go. So you can definitely combo him with other characters like Medea for, you know, just like completely wiping out buffs on characters if you do have to do a battle where, you know, it's a buff, he buff heavy battle or something like that. So it definitely has its uses, it's just not going to be doing a ton of damage overall. Okay, so some of the craft essences that this character can utilize best. First up is going to be a Knight's Oath, which is his level 10 bond craft essence. Now while equipped, this will increase quick cards and art card effectiveness for all of your allies by 10% while in the field. So this is pretty nice because it gives you the dual buffs, but overall you're probably going to opt for a different craft essence. Uh, but definitely, you know, if you need him in a arts and quick setup team, this might be one of the better options to go for. As for the other craft essences, 
Uh, first up is Kaleidoscope. Of course, Kaleidoscope's on here, and this is definitely useful for getting his Noble Phantasm ready at the start of the fight, in case you have to take out a, like, mini boss or a mid wave enemy that has a particularly, you know, nasty buff or something like that. So you always want that Noble Phantasm ready to go whenever you need to clear it out, and then it should give you time to get the Noble Phantasm ready again by the time you get to the boss to use it again to remove the buffs of the bosses. So it's definitely not a bad craft essence. You could also go with a fragment of 2030 to, you know, keep that star generation going, get more stars every turn, and then maximize his crit damage. You're probably using him on crit teams anyway, so, you know, any type, anytime you can get more stars on those type of teams, it's going to be very helpful. You could also go with the Gander or the Imaginary Around to boost his overall quick card effectiveness, you know, make up for some of that lost damage he has with his lack of stats and his lack of attack boosting skills. So now moving on here to the character in review. So first up is going to be some of the servants you can combo with this character. So first up here, you can combo him with Asterios. So this is a good combo because if you're going against females especially, you can use Dyramid's second skill for the attack decrease and you can use Asterios' Noble Phantasm for the massive you know, attack decrease for six turns. And overall, the enemies, is, if they're females, they're just not gonna be doing that much damage to you at all. So it's a really good setup, but it's only really useful if you're going against female enemies. So another good combo you can use is with Medea. Now I did mention this earlier in the video, but you can alternate their Noble Phantasms to keep removing buffs from the enemies, or if multiple enemies have them, you can use them in the same turn to remove all of them. Uh, it's just a really nice combo, you just keep removing their buffs and make them so much easier to kill which will probably make farming whatever you're doing faster or just completing the mission overall. You could also use Medea's third skill to help Dyrmid's Noble Phantasm gain go a little bit faster because she does have that skill to increase the Noble Phantasm generation. So that's a really nice way, a, a really good combination right there. Another pretty solid team setup is going to be comboing both Lancers together from the Fate animes. So you Dyrmid and Ku Colin together. Uh, it's kind of like a dream pairing right there putting the two Lancers together on the same team, and they do work pretty well together, you know, in a crit-centered quick team. Again though, this team setup is primarily useful only against female servants because you can combo Dyrmid's second skill with the fact that Ku has like insane survivability so you can use his heal when his protection from the arrows is on cooldown, and you can just keep recycling it probably over and over if you have him maxed out. To, to the point where Q just never dies at all, as long as you're going against female servants. So it is very helpful and it's very nice. And you know, they do produce some pretty solid damage there with the crit team setup. So overall, it's not a bad combination. So another good option is going to be Waver. Uh, Waver's going to find his way on a lot of these top servant setups here, at least until Merlin comes out. Uh, overall, he's just a really good servant. He can help increase uh, Dearmaid's defense and attack, and then he can increase the amount of critical damage he does while simultaneously charging his Noble Phantasm. So overall, you know, is a very good combination of servants. So now moving on here to the actual rankings for his categories. First up is going to be stats, and I'm going to give him a 2 out of 5 stars for that. You know, him being a 3 star servant, you know, he just doesn't have that good of stats overall in general. So 2 out of 5 for that. And then for his skills, I'm giving him 2.5 out of 5. Um, you know, he's got, like I said, he has solid skills, but they don't really combo well together. And some of them are very situational, so unfortunately, it's going to lose some points for him there, which, you know, just gives him the average 2.5 out of 5. And then for his Noble Phantasm, you know, it is a very solid Noble Phantasm, but it doesn't do that much damage. However, it does have that really good effect of removing buffs. So I am going to give it a 3 out of 5 for the Noble Phantasm. So now for his survivability, uh, he does have some solid setups for survivability for his skills with his first skill being particularly useful for this, giving him a full turn of evasion and a defense boost. And then his second skill, while it is very situational, it does reduce the attack of all females, so that in turn makes it harder for him to be killed by those servants, which will increase his survivability. So I am going to give him three stars overall in survivability. So now for his versatility, um, outside of fighting female servants, he doesn't have much of a use. And there aren't too many situations where you would opt to use him over, say, someone like Ku, who is probably easier to get, and you probably already have him, maybe even have a maxed out Noble Phantasm level 5. So overall, he's just generally a better option to use than this character, so I'm only going to give him a 2 stars 
in versatility. So overall, that will give him a two and a half stars out of five rating. Um, he is a very average servant with not many upsides, and he's generally outclassed by pretty much every other Lancer. But yeah, guys, I'm going to leave you here with his Noble Phantasm, and I will see you guys next time.